We're in the Mishnah, Samach Hamad Aleph. Zok the Mishnah. Mi Shehoya B'Mizrach. A person is on the east side of a city. In other words, as Rashi here says, he was out in the field and Shabbos is coming in. Vamal of Noi, and he says to his son, Arev Li B'Mayrev. Go and make an Eidah for me towards the west. Or, B'Mayrev, he was at, on the west of the city, outside, stuck there before Shabbos. Vamal of Noi, and he says to his son, Arev Li B'Mizrach. Go and make me an Eidah on Mizrach side. Im Yeshe Menu L'Beise Al Mama. If, from where he is to his house, is 2,000 Amas. In other words, he can go there to within his Tchum. But to the place where he put his son to put the Eidav, his son is putting the Eidav in the other direction. So there's more than 2,000 Amas. So Mutala Beisai, he's allowed to go to his house. But Vasa Leiruva, he's not allowed to go to his Eidav, it's too far. Leiruva Al Mama, if he's closer to his Eidav and the Eidav is within his Tchum, and his house is far away from him, then he can go to the Eidov, and he cannot go to his house. Because yeah, the Eidov is good, the Eidov is within his Tchum, but his house is not. In the first case where the Mishnah here says that his house is within his Tchum, and the Eidov is not, and the Mishnah says he can go to his house, Rashi asks a question, why could he go to his house? He didn't intend to be in his house. Where did he have a mind to do his shvisa for Shabbos? By the Eidov. Mm -hmm. And that was too far. <clears throat> What's usually the halach of a person has a mind to put an Eidov somewhere, not to be where he is, but he wants to be shaved somewhere else, and that Eidov does not take okay. effect. The halacha is that you can't move out of Yadal Damas because you don't want to be here, and the place where you wanted to be, it didn't take effect, so you can't move out of Yadal Damas. So why don't I say the same thing here? Mm -hmm. The place where you wanted to put the Eidov didn't work, so you shouldn't be able to go anywhere. So Rashi says, a house is different. A person always has in mind that if, if it doesn't work to go to his Eidov, the house is the place where he lives. Mm -hmm. And therefore, he can go to his house. A person that puts the Eidov in the Ibud of the city. Right? The Ibud of Shalir, we learned before, that the parameters around the city, that's still part of the city. If that's where you place your Eidov, you haven't accomplished anything. Because a person, even before he puts his Eidov, is allowed to walk that entire place. The whole entire city is like, is like your Dalar Amis, mm -hmm. if you're in the city. So what do you gain if you're putting the Eidov in another place, somewhere within the city? You accomplish nothing. If you put the Eidov out of the Tchom, so the Gemara, as Rashi says, will explain that out of the Tchom means you put it outside of the, of the borders of the city. You put it uh, one Amah outside of the city. What happens? Masha Niskar, this that you gain in that direction, let's say he puts his Erev on the Mizrach side, one Amma outside the city, so you gain now one Amma to be able to walk in that direction, who maps it? So on Maidav side, you're gonna get, you're gonna lose an Amma that you gain. That's always the way Erev works, as we've learned so many times before. If you're making Erev towards Mizrach, so now you can walk towards Mizrach another 2,000 Amas, but you lose that space towards Maidav. So whatever you gain on one side, you lose on the other side. The Gemara starts with the first case of the Mishnah. Kasal Kedaitach, Gemara thought, Lemizrach, what does it mean when it said, Lemizrach, Lemizrach Beisai. This person was stuck outside the city and he was on the east of his house. And Lemaidev, when he tells his son, go put an Eidav for me on Maidev side, what does that mean? Lemaidev Beisai. His son was on the other side of the house. He tells his son, go put the Eidav, and his son went and put the Eidav on the Maidev side of his house. So, how are they positioned over here? You have this person, you have his house, and then afterwards you have his son. Right? So the house is always closer to the person than the place where the son put the aid of. The aid of put, he put the aid of on the other side of the house. That's how the, what we thought the case is. If so, the question is, It makes sense to say that the house is closer to him. The house is within 2,000 arms to him. Uleiruva yes mikan and the Eidov is further away. The Eidov is more than two thousand Amis. Mishkachaslo makes sense. The Mati lebeisa he can come to his house. Why Mati leiruva he can't come to his Eidov. The Eidov is further. The, the house is in between him and where the Eidov is. Ella, but the second case where the Mishnah said hey menu uleiruva al paim mama that he's closer to where his Eidov is. Ulebeisa yes mikan but he's further away from his house. Hechem mishkachaslo how is that possible? If it's in a straight line, first the person, then his house, and then the Eidov is after the house, so the house is always before the Eidov. So how could the Eidov be closer than his house? Amar Rav Yitzchak, so Rav Yitzchak explained, no, you're not learning right, Shat in the Mishnah, Bechlau. 
Do you think when it says that he's in a Mizrach, it means he's the Mizrach from his house, that the house is in between him and where his Ada was placed? Or Lamaidav, Lamaidav Beisai, in the next case of the Mishnah where it says that he was on the other side, he was Maidav, it means he was on the Maidav of his house, and therefore the house is between him and his Edov. That's not the Pshat. If that would have been the Pshat, of course the Edov is further than his house. But that's not what it means. Loi, Le Mizrach means Le Mizrach Benoi. He's on the Mizrach of, the, of his son. Le Maidav means Le Maidav Benoi. He's on the Maidav side of his son. They're walking together, and the Mishnah is giving you examples in which side of his son he is. But not regarding the house. The house is not between him and his Edov necessarily. It could be a case where the, the Edov is closer to him than his house. It could be a case where the house is closer than the Edov. That's the Pshat in the Mishnah. Rava Barav Shiloma, Rava Barav Shila says, no, we can afil a tema, le mizrach, le mizrach, beisai, or le maidav, le maidav, beisai. We can say that the case is that there's the person, there's his house, and then is the Eidov, and still it's possible that the Eidov should be closer than his house. How is that possible? The answer is, it's not in a straight line. If you, if you put it in a straight line, the person, the house, and after the house comes the Eidov, of course the Eidov is further than the house. But rather, it's diagonally. If you, if you see, you can see here the picture in Anashi. See the picture right at the side of the Gemara in Anashi? Mm -hmm. So there's the person, the Koimai, where he's standing. And then you have right across is the Eidov. And in between is his house. So now, that house which is in between, it's not in a straight line where the Eidov is behind the house. The house is on the side. It's possible that that house is further. And it's possible that it's closer. Those are the two cases that the mission is talking about. That house that's on the side... Depends how far out it is. So therefore, in the, in the words of the Gemara, Kagain the Kai Beisei Balaksaina. The house is not between him and his Eidov. The house is diagonally off on the side. So it's possible that he should be closer to his Eidov. The Eidov should be within 2,000 Amas, and the house is further out on the side, diagonally more than 2,000 Amas. Or it's possible that his Eidov is further away, and his house is closer. That was the case that the Mishnah was talking about when it made this distinction. The next thing it said in the Mishnah was, And then it said, if you put your Eidov out of your Tchum, so then it's a good Eidov. He put the Eidov out of his Tchum. If you learn the simple translation of those words, it means he placed the food for his Eidov out of the 2,000 Amas. How does that work? He can't put your Eidov out of your Tchum. You have to put it at the end of the 2,000 Amas. What it means is, he put it out of the Ibor of the city. In this case means, out of the city that has an Ibor as well, he placed it one Amma out of the city, so then he gains the space on that direction, and he loses an Amma in the other direction. So what did it say in the Mishnah? Again, sorry. What he gains by placing the Eidav in one direction, he lose that, loses that equivalent in the other direction. Is that so? He only uh, gains in one direction and only that equivalent is he lose in the other direction the person could lose much more because of Atanya, we learned in Abra'is you place the Eidiv within the parameters of the city you've accomplished nothing the whole city is like your Dal Ramas you place the Eidiv outside of the city one Amma you gain in that direction Mistaker Oisa Amma he gains that Amma in that direction. But then, what happens? Umafsid is ir kula. Now you lose the, uh, the city in the other direction. Why is that? midas ha'ir midas Now, the city, you're going to have to measure from where you put your Eidov into the city. And wherever your 2,000 Amas ends, that's until where you can go. You can't go any further than that. What are we saying over here? Usually, when a person is inside a city for Shabbos, so what's the halach of the city? You can, the whole entire city is like your Dalai You can walk around the city as much as you want. Yeah. Then from outside the city, that's where you begin measuring 2,000 Amas. However, if this person placed his aid of one Amma in the other direction outside of the city, so now your Shvisa is not in the city anymore. If your Shvisa is not in the city, you have to measure from the place where you put your aid of 2,000 Amas. And if your 2,000 Amas is going to end in the middle of the city, so be it. The city is not anymore considered to be your Dalai Amas. You're not dwelling in the city. So therefore, you're going to lose the entire status of this city being your Dalai Amas by placing the Eidov outside the city. So the question of the Gemara is, 
Why are we saying that you only lose the equivalent of that one Amma that you put out? You lose the whole ability to consider the city to be like your Dalad Amas. And for the Gemara, like it's not a question. If you place an Eidov outside of the city, and now the space of 2,000 Amas ends somewhere in the middle of the city, so then that's where you're, you have to measure 2,000 Amas, and that's where your Tchum ends. If I put the eight of Tchumen outside of the city and my 2,000 Amis extends all the way to the end of the whole city, the entire city is included within that space of the 2,000 Amis, so then the entire city is still considered to be like Dalar Amis for me. And I begin measuring the 2,000 Amis at the end of the city. So it depends how much... huh? Depends how big the city is, exactly. If it's a very big city and your tchum ends in the center of the city, that's where you have to stop. If it's a smaller city and your tchum goes all the way till the end of the city, it's all included in your tchum, so then that entire area is still considered to be your Dalaramas and you measure from outside. Okay, the Rabidi, and this is like what the Rabidi said, the Omar Abidi, Omar Abishua ben Levi, Hoya Maidi Duba. A person is measuring from where he placed his tchum. And he's walking, like we learned before, a person measures, he measures his steps, and he walks, and, he's, and he comes to Uba, and he enters into the city, and the space of the 2,000 Amas ends where? In the center of the city. So then, that's until where you can walk. That's the end of your 2,000 Amas. If you measure from where your Erev Tchumen is, and it extends all the way to the end of the city, the entire city is included in your Erev Tchumen. Then Nasis Loihair Kula Kedalar Amis, the entire city that's included in your Tchum becomes like your Dalar Amis, Umashlim Sashar. And then the rest, the other two thousand Amis, you begin measuring from outside the city. So that's the difference between our Mishnah and the Braise. In the Mishnah, you don't lose your city because it was a smaller city. In the Braise, it was a city where your Tchum ent- finished in the middle of the city. Amar Avidi, Sir Avidi, which repeated this in the name of Rabbi Shur Levi, he said, Ein elo ela divrei nevias. This is mamish words of prophecy. So what's the pshat when he says this expression, that it's words of prophecy? Rashi says that he doesn't understand the difference. What should be the reason for the difference? If your tchum ends in the middle of the city, or your tchum ends at the end of the city, that everything is included in your tchum. If your Erev is right now outside the city, so you weren't Shavis in the city. If you're Shavis in the city, so then the entire city is your space, it's all your Daladamas. If you place your Tchum outside the city, regardless of where your Tchum ends, you have 2,000 Amas from where you placed your, your Eidu. What difference does it make if it ends in the middle of the city or the end of the city? So therefore Rashi says, he, said, there's no, he doesn't understand the reason for this is. It's like a Divrei Nevuah that has no reason, like a Navi that speaks and doesn't give any reason. So Rashi says, Taisa says, that when the Gemara uses an expression, Ein elo ela divrei nevius, the Gemara means it in the positive sense, that it's a l'shvach, that in order to understand this, you have to be so smart, it's my, a regular chachma, you can't understand it. You have to have, be a novi to understand this svar over here. Ruach HaKadosh, Adarabi, he's saying it as a shvach, that this is a tremendous chiddish of Rabbi Shua ben Levi. And he says, look, look, look inside the Lashon of the Gemara, Mali kolsa b'chatzieir, mali kolsa b'seifir. If you're p- placing your eight of tchumen outside the city, why should it matter if your 2,000 Amis ends in the center of the city? Or it includes the, and envelops the entire city. What difference should it be? So he says, this is the, it's hard to understand it. This is a higher, p'saruach ha-kaydesh, yeah. Oh, my Rave, says Rave, tarvayu taninu, tanini. No, it's, it's something that actually we could see in a Befeidish Mishnah. He doesn't understand why is Rav Idi wondering about this and calling this Divrei Nevi'is. And what was Bechlal the Chiddush of Rabbi Shua ben Levi? It's, you can see the, both of these points in the Mishnah. Again, which both points? That if your Tchum entered into the city and it finished in the center of the city, that's where your Tchum finishes. And if it enveloped the entire city, then the whole city is like your Dalar Amis. And you can walk from there another 2,000 Amis. Both of these points we see in the Mishnah. Where, where, we, where do we see this in the Mishnah? Sorry. So this says in the Mishnah, this is actually the next Mishnah that we're going to learn soon. Anche ir g'dayla, the people of a large city, mahalchen es kal ir ketana. They can walk the, an entire small city. What is this talking about? What does it mean that the people of a large city can walk the entire small city? So Rashi explains that the way the Gemara is teaching this over here is that if you have people 
from a big city and they placed the Edov outside the city and that the, the 2,000 Amis of where they placed their Edov includes the entire small city. Because it's a small city, the 2,000 Amis will end at the end of the small city. So then the halach is, Mahalchim is Kalir Ketana. The entire small city is like their Dalar Amis. It's all included in the Edov. The Ein Anshe Ir Ketana, Mahalchim is called Ir Gedayla. But if people from a small city place the Edov outside their city, and now their 2,000 Amis ends where? In the middle of the big city. It's a big city, so it ends in the middle of the big city, so then they can't treat the entire city as their Dalar Amis, and the, wherever it finishes, that's where it ends. So what do we see over here? My time, what is the reason for the difference between the Anshe Gedayla and the Anshe Ketana? Lav Mishon, the Hani Kalsim Edosim Bechatsi'ir, the people of the small city, their Edo, the, the Tchum of 2,000 Amis ends in the middle of the city. Vahani calls him Yidosim Besayf here. But the people from the big city, when they make an Edov, and it extends into the small city, it ends at the end of the small city. So therefore it's all included. So, what's the Gemara's question? You see here that both of the points say Befetish in this Mishnah. Says the Gemara, but the Rabidi, Rabidi that, 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 that was wondering, Rabidi that said that this is Divrei Nevi'ez, this is a Chiddush of Rabbi Shua ben Levi, he had a whole different Gersh in the Mishnah. His Gersh was Anshe, Anshe Toni. Not like we just had over here. Look, look again. What did it say in the, what we just read? In the first case, it said, Anshe Ir Gedayla, that the people of the Ir Gedayla could walk in the Ir Katana. And then it said, Ve'ein Anshe Ir Katana, that the people of the Ir Katana cannot walk the entire Ir Gedayla. Ravidi was not Gaitis that way. He was Gaitis that the Anshe Ir Gedayla could go the entire Ir Katana, and also Anshe Ir Katana could go the entire Ir Gedayla. That's how he was Gaitis. And what's the case? It's not talking b'chalal about what we were, we were speaking about till now. What were we speaking about till now? You place the eight of Tchumen outside the city and you're measuring. You're measuring the 2,000 Amis. Where does it end? Does it end in the middle of the city? Does it end at the end of the city? That's not what we're talking about. Rather, on Moikim Law, he establishes the case of this Mishnah, B'naisim, that the people of a small city put their food for their eight of in a big city. Or the people from a small city put the food for their aid of in a, in, a, in, a, in a big city or in a small city. Nice. They each put their aid of, and once if you put your aid of in a city, so the entire city is considered to be like your Dalaramas. That's what the Mishnah is talking about. Usually, if a person puts his aid of somewhere, so you don't have uh, the, the entire area is not your Dalaramas. It's that you, have, you measure from wherever you put your food from there, 2,000 Amas. The Chiddush of this Mishnah is if you place your food into a city, so that entire city becomes now your Shvise, even though you're not presently there, it's only your food that's there, that entire city becomes your Dalar Amis. And now from there you measure 2,000 Amis. That's what the Mishnah is talking about. It's a completely different halacha. So you don't have any source to what Rabbi Yeshua ben Levi said, Avomaydid, Loitnan. But this thing that we said, that when you're measuring and your Tchum ends in the middle of the city or at the end of the city, that it doesn't say in the Mishnah at all. And in that case, when you're measuring, it doesn't it say it in the Mishnah as well, but Tnan, in that Mishnah, right over here in the bottom of the Yomad, it says, When a person is measuring from his Tchum, how far can he go? He measures 2,000 Amas. And even if the it ends in the middle of a cave somewhere, so that's it. That's where he has to stay. So what do we see over here? That when a person measures 2,000 Amas, wherever the 2,000 Amas is, that's where it ends. So we see clearly that a person that measures from his tchom, even if he's going to measure in the middle of a city, measures into a maira, in the middle of a city, wherever you're measuring into, wherever it ends, that's where it ends. So we see this halacha clearly in the Mishnah. And says the Gemara, Soi fa'ir itzrichelei the light na. No, there's still a chiddush that Rabbi Shua ben Levi said that it did not say in the Mishnah. Rabbi Shua ben Levi added the other case, that if the entire city is going to be included in your 2,000 Amis, that then we treat the city to be like your four Amis. That it never said the Fetish in the Mishnah. That was the Chiddush of Rabbi Shua ben Levi that Rabbi Idi bar Ovin, or Rabbi Idi that is, was wondering about, and he said that it's Divrei Nevi'is. Talk to Gemara, Omar Rav Nachman. Now going back to this Mishnah, it's, it's the Mishnah Mamash over here on the bottom of the Yomit. When you look in that Mishnah, in our Mishnah, it does not say the Girsa that the Gemara began with, that, the Anshi, that there's a difference between Anshi Ir Gedayla and Anshi Ir, Anshi Ir Katana. In the Mishnah that we have, it just says, you can take a look at the bottom of the Yomad, the Mishnah. You see the Mishnah at the bottom of the Yomad? Anshi'ir Gedayla, Ma'alchanas Kaliyar Ketana. Anshi'ir Ketana, Ma'alchanas Kaliyar Gedayla. 
doesn't make any difference. And then it says, It's talking about a case where a person placed his Erev in another city. That once you place your Erev in that city, it becomes your place and it's like your Dalaramas. That's what it says in the Mishnah. So the Gemara now is going to explain this Gersa. And it's also going to explain the other Gersa that we said before, that it says first Anshe and then it says Ein Anshe. So Omer Rav Nachman, Man, the Tony Anshe, Loi Mishtabish. The one that's good is twice Anshe. Is, is not mistaken. Um, man de tani ain anshe, and one that makes a distinction and says ain anshe, also le mishtabish. It's also not a mistake. There's two ways that I learned this Mishnah. Man de tani anshe le mishtabish, the moikin la benoisen. The case is that you're in one city, but now you placed your aid of in another city. That's the halacha. And so there's no difference between a large city, a small city, it's the same thing. Um, man de tani ain anshe, the one that makes a distinction between a large city and a small city, and he's great as ain anshe, it's also not a mistake. The Maikim La Bemaide. The case is where you're measuring your trom, and there's a difference if it ends in the middle of the city or it ends at the end of the city. The Chasuri Mechsere. But according to this Gersa, there's going to be missing words in the Mishnah. And this is how you have to read the Mishnah. The people of a large city can go the entire Ir Kitana. When they uh, but the people of a small city cannot go the entire length of a big city. When is that? If you're measuring from your trom, so there's a difference if it ends in the middle of the city by a, by a big city, or it ends at the end of the city by a small city. A person's living in a big city, and you put your head in another city in a small city. Or Haya Bir Katana, you're living in a small city, and you place your Erev in a big city, Mahalachas Kula. Then the whole city is treated like your Dalar Amis. If you established your Shvisa by placing food there in that city, you can go there, you can walk the entire city like your Dalar Amis. And then you measure from outside the city another 2,000 Amis. Okay. So now the Gemara is going to bring a story of a case. Of two cities, and uh, it's going to prove this Indian over here that we're speaking about. Omar of Yasef, Omar Rami Bar Abba, Omar of Huna. Here, actually, the Gemara first starts with uh, with another case. Okay, let's see. This uh, this is a, a di- different story altogether, a different case. We're going to come back to this story of uh, big city, small city soon. But first, the Gemara says as follows: Here, she yisheves of Svasanachal. You have a city that is right at the uh, edge of a uh, river. So, in Yashlofanea Dako, if you build a barrier by the river that's Arba, that's going to be four Amis high, then Maiden Ulam is Fasanacha. So then it's a, it's a proper city, and just like every city that you measure from outside the city and not from each house individually, you also measure over here from the, from the wall of the city, from outside the city. But the Imlav, if you did not put up a barrier between the river and the city, so then you only measure from each house individually. And the reason is, Rashi says, similar to something that we learned before, when a person is living in a tent city, or like a, I don't know, a trailer city, and it's not a proper city, it's just there temporarily. So too, a city that's right near the riverbank, and the water comes over into the city and it floods the city, people can't live there permanently. If you don't have a proper barrier, it's not a permanent dwelling of a city. So therefore, the houses that are there are temporary. So every person measures the Eidu from his house. Now Abaye commented regarding what he said, Daka Arba Ames Allah, did you say about this? He's telling Rabbi Yasef, he's asking Rabbi Yasef, did you say that this barrier has to be four uh, Ames high? What is the difference between the barriers that were mentioned before? We had before barriers when a person had a barrier at the bottom of a ladder, a barrier, different barriers that we mentioned before at the opening of a mavoi. Over there, it only had to be four tfachim high, not four amasai. So why here are you saying four amasai? Over there, the issue wasn't that you're afraid to use this area. You don't need a high proper barrier. Over here, the issue is that you have a river and it's going to flood over. Mm-hmm. And if you're not going to have a barrier four amas high, a barrier of four tfachim high, what's four tfachim? Four tfachim is less than an ama. It's a tiny barrier. It's like one foot high. One foot high is nothing. It's not going to help the, the river still going to flow over. So over here, it has to be four amas high. Amar Yasef, where do I see this thing? Oh, so Rabbi Yasef says, because we learned in the following thing. Hit the Rabbi, 
Shehiu Bnei Geder Yerdin Lechamson. There were two cities. One was at the top of the mountain, and one was sort of in the middle of the mountain. So you had the Bnei Geder, name of a city. They were at the top of the mountain, and there was Chamson, which was in the middle of the mountain. So he allowed the people of Geder to go down to Chamson, but he said the Ain Bnei Chamson Oylon Legeder. The people from Chamson cannot go up together on Shabbos. What's the difference? My timer. Love isn't the reason. Mishum Dahani Ovod Dako isn't the reason because the people of Geder, uh, they built a barrier. Okay, so just like by a river, there's a fear that the river is going to flow over into the city. So it's not a permanent city. It's the same thing also that a, a city that's on the tip of the mountain and people could go flying down the mountain. If you don't build a proper barrier, it's also not going to be considered a permanent city. Right? So w- wouldn't we say the pshat is that the people of Geder built a proper barrier, so therefore they measure their tchum from outside their city, and therefore from outside their city, it's close enough, they're able to go to Chamson. And but the people of Chamson, they did not build a barrier around their city, so they have to measure from their individual houses, and from their house, it's not close enough to be able to go together. That would be the pshat in this uh, story that the Braise here says. So Gemara says, no, there's going to be a different pshat. Gemara here is going to bring a few pshat in. Gemara here brings in a very interesting pshat. It has nothing to do with any halacha of Erev at all. Kiyosar Avdimi Yomar, when Avdimi came and said, you know what this Braise is talking about? Tatrugi mitatrigi luhu b'nei chamson. The people of Gader were very vicious people, and they would assault the people of Chamson that came to visit them in their city. So Rabbi, so Rabbi said, they shouldn't go. People of Chamson should not go to the city of Gader because they're going to assault them. The people of Gad, they could go to Hamson. So Umay Hitter, when it uses the, the Bryce, the expression of Hitter, he allowed, it's mashman that it was like a halacha. It wasn't a halacha. It's nothing to do with Erevin. Hiskin. Rabbi established and told them in order that they shouldn't get into fights, the people of Hamson should not go together so they shouldn't be assaulted. The Gemara asks, if that's the case, if it's just about keeping the peace, so Umay Shna Shabbos, why, why, why are we saying this regarding Shabbos? Should be every day of the year. And says the Gemara, the Shechem be Shechres, because Shabbos is a time when people drink, people are, if you're mm-hmm. drunk, so then it could be bigger problems. So, Dafke Shabbos is when Rebbe instituted that the people of Hamson should not visit the people of Gadar. Frek the Gemara, wait a minute, but if the people of Gadar are so vicious, ki ozli if they're going to come down to the city of Hamson, nami mitatri giluhu, they're also going to assault the people of Hamson. Why are we saying that the people of Hamson shouldn't go to Gadar? To, to, to be secure, not be assaulted there, people of God will come down to Hamson and, uh, and also will assault them there. So he says, no, we're not afraid of that. Why not? And he gives an example. Kalba beloy Mosei, Shev Shnin Novach. A dog, even seven years out of his city, he's not in his place of comfort, he won't bark. So the same thing over here, he's saying the people of God there in their city, when the people of Hamson come to visit them, they feel comfortable enough to assault them. But if they go down to the city of Hamson, it's not their city, we're not afraid that they're going to assault them. If so, If when the people of God there come to the city of Hamson, they're not comfortable with themselves, so shouldn't we be afraid that the people of Hamson will attack them? To take revenge from them? And for the Gemara, no, no, no. They might not be comfortable enough out of their city to attack the people of Hamson, but the people of God there will not be able to, uh, the people of Hamson, that is, will not be able to attack the people of, uh, of God there. They were still stronger enough that they won't be able to be attacked. So the kids, uh, according to Ravdimi's Pshat, this whole thing about these two cities that were near each other, there was no issue of Erev Tchumen, this was just an issue of keeping the peace between them, that they shouldn't attack each other. Okay, now the Gemara brings that third Pshat, and for this we're going to need a picture. There's a few Pshatim and Rishonim, we'll learn Rashi's Pshat. Rav Safra Omar, Rav Safra says, Ir o asuya avoy. What we're talking about over here is the city God there, which was on the top of the mountain, was a city that was like in the shape of a square. Mm-hmm. But the city of Hamson that was further down on the mountain, it was in the shape of a bowl. Okay, so therefore yeah, what? Huh? No, so it is a machlaikis. It's mach- that's Faisus's chat. This is Rav, I'm telling you now, it's Rashi's chat. So let's take a look in the picture. We're going to be in Rav Samach Aleph. So we take a look at picture Tov Ches. It's on page Nun Zayin. Okay, got it? Picture Tov Ches. Nun Zayin. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, so the people of God there. Last picture. The last yeah, yeah, yeah. So <clears throat> the case over here is that usually when you have a city that's a, in the shape of a bow, where do you measure the uh, tchum of, of, of this city? So if the two tips of the bow are close enough, so then it's as if there's a there's string across the bow and you measure from there. So in that case, Goder and Hamsan are like right near each other. But over here, the two tips of the bow have more than 4,000 amas in between. So you don't measure from the string of the bow, you measure from the bottom of the bow. So if that's the case, if you're walking from Hamsan to Goder, so your tchom is going to end somewhere in the middle of the city of Goder. Goder is a big box, and you're, you're not going to be able to enter in the entire city of Goder, just in the beginning, and that's it. You're going to have to stop there. But if you're going from Goder to Hamsan, the 2,000 Amas from the edge of Goder ends at the other side of Hamsan. The entire city of Hamsan is included in that 2,000 Amas. So therefore, the people of Goder could go through the entire city of Hamsan. It's all included. But the people of Hamsan cannot go more than just a little bit into Goder. See, in both directions, you see the difference over here. Okay, that's Rashi Pshat and the Gemara. There's other Pshatim. Taisus says the other way around. But then there's a third Pshat as well. Let's uh, go back there. Ravdimi Barchinana Ma Ravdimi Barchinana says, Anshe ir Gedaila va Anshe ir Ketana Havoi. The same concept that we already had before. There's a large city, there's a small city, and you put an eight of outside, and by a large city, it's only until wherever your 2,000 Amas ends in the middle of the city, and then there's the smallest city that your entire eight of is the 2,000 Amas includes the entire city. That was the difference here between Hamson and Gadir. Okay, now the Gemara just uh, will conclude here with the, the naming of who said what. Rav Kahana Masni Hachi. Rav Kahana, he learned the names of the ones that said the answers the way we just mentioned them. But Rav Tivyemi Masni Hachi. Rav Tivyemi said his answers a bit differently. Rav Safra and Dimi Barchinena. He said that Rav Safra and Rav Dimi Barchinena both gave answers, but we don't know who gave which answer. But we're not sure who said what. That's the only difference over here with what uh, Tviyemi said differently. Okay. Now we go to the very last Mishnah. Is this the last Mishnah of the Tadik? Yeah, this is the last Mishnah of the all the halachas of Erev Tchumen. We've been learning about Erev Tchumen for four prakim now. Yeah. Four prakim. <coughs> so we're done, and after this we're going to be going to Erev Chatseris. Okay. So let's go. Dr. More Mishne. Fun, more fun to come. Huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dr. Mishne, Anche Ir Gedaila. This is the Mishnah we just learned about. The people of a large city, if they place their Erev in a small city, Mahalchan is called Ir Ketana. The entire small city is treated like their Dalaramas. Anche Ir Ketana, Mahalchan is called Ir Gedaila. People of a small city that place their Erev in a big city, it's all like their Dalaramas. Ketzad, Misha Ir Gedaila. Persons living in a big city. Vanas and Eseruva Bir Ketana. And he places his aid of in a small city. Or Beir Ketani is living in a small city. And he puts food for an aid of in a big city. That entire city where he placed his aid of is like his Dalad Amis. And then and then from outside that city, he measures 2,000 Amis. Abba Kiva, though, disagrees with this. Abba Kiva says, Just like any place, wherever a person puts an aid of, we only give him 2,000 amas from where his food is. Mm-hmm. Even if you put it inside a city, we don't treat the entire city like a dollar amas. From wherever your Erev is, you get 2,000 amas. Would you not agree with me if a person places his Erev outside somewhere, in a cave? That from wherever your Erev is, you have 2,000 amas. Respond to him. Yeah, you place it in a maira outside of a city, in a place where no one's living there. So then you only ask 2,000 amas from wherever his Erev is. But if a person puts his Erev in a city where people are living there, in such a case, the entire city is like his Dalad Amas. And then then you measure from outside of it 2,000 amas. In Nimtza, so according to the Chacham's opinion, it comes out, Kal Toicha Me Al Gaba that there would be a bigger kula if you have a maira. Let's say you have a maira that people are living inside of it. So inside, the maira would be more lenient than if you place the Erev on top of the maira outside of it. Inside where people are living, you don't get only four. You, you, the whole entire place is considered to be like your four Amis. But if you place it outside where nobody's living there, you get 2,000 Amis and that's it. 
Okay, so this is the machloikis between Rabbi Kiva and the Chachamim. But as we'll see in a moment in the Gemara, this entire machloikis is when a person is placing his food as an Eidet Chumen in another city. Does he get the whole city like his Dalaramas or not? But the city that you're actually Shavis in, that you're physically present in, everybody agrees that in that city, the whole city is treated like your Dalaramas. And you measure from outside the city another 2,000 Amas. That, that there's no argument about, as we'll see. But now the Mishnah says, Now Chacham would agree to Rabbi Kiva regarding a Maidit. Maidit means you place your Eid of outside the city somewhere. And you're measuring 2,000 Amas. So when you measure, so Naisen, Alpayim Amma, we give him 2,000 Amas. And that includes even if it's 2,000 Amas and somewhere in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of a cave or wherever it may be. Everybody, or ends in the middle of a city, wherever it is, everybody agrees that when, when you're measuring from where your aid of is outside a city, wherever your 2,000 Amas ends, that's where it ends. Okay. So now the Gemara is going to discuss. So here we were talking about a regular city. Regular city, what did it say in the Mishnah? The Yudin, there's a city, people are living there. The Gemara is going to discuss now what happens if you have a city that don't, doesn't have anybody living there. It's a desolate city. So does the same achleikis between Rabbi Kiva and Chachamim apply or not? Or maybe the Chachamim will agree in this case that it's like putting your Eid of outside the middle of nowhere. If you yourself were present in the city that's desolate, that was destroyed, so then, or it's, it's, there's no one living there, according to the Rabbanon, the entire area of that city, even though it's desolate, is considered to be like your Dal Rames, and then and outside of it, you have another 2,000 Amas. Rashi says this is not only according to the Rabbana, this is even according to Rabbi Kiva, because as I mentioned before, if you're physically present there, everybody agrees that it's like your Dalar Amas. And that's even if the city is a desolate city. But, if you place the food of your Eidov in a desolate city, so then the Chacham would agree, so then a desolate city is not like a settled city. Over here, the Rabbana would agree to, to Rabbi Kiva that you only get 2,000 Amis. The whole entire city is not considered to be like your four Amis. Nobody's living there. It's like you put it out in the middle of nowhere. That's what Rabbi said in the name of Shmuel. Rabbi Laza, Rabbi Laza this is not, it doesn't make a difference. Echad Shavas, whether you were there present yourself, Echad Himiach, whether you place the aid of the food, the aid of inside this desolate city, Mahalach has Kula, Chachamim still hold of their opinion that the whole city is considered to be like your Dalar Amis. And then you have additional 2,000 Amas outside of this. So we have a machlaikis regarding a desolate city. What did the Rabbanon hold? Is it considered to be like your Dalar Amas or not? So the Gemara says, let's look at what it said in the Mishnah. Would you not agree with me if you place an Erev in a cave that you only get 2,000 Amas? So what did the Chachamim respond? I agree to you in a cave because there's nobody living there. But in a city, people are living there, right? That's what the Chacham were saying. So the Gemara is Medayik. So what do we see over here? That the only reason they're arguing with Rabbi Kiva is because in the city, people are living there. But if you have a city which is desolate and nobody lives there, so the Chacham should agree to Rabbi Kiva. Gemara says, no, we could answer, according to Rav Yudah Mashmul, my aim the Yudin ain't a ruyo litira. He means a place that's not even fit for living. So we hear, as Rashi explains, you can have a city that was broken down, the walls of the city were broken down, and it's not any more fit for living over there. So then, yeah, in such a case, it's like putting it out in a cave somewhere. But over here, we're talking about a, a ir chareva, that nobody lives there, but there's still walls around the city, there's still houses there, and it's royal there. Somebody could go and live there. In such a case, Chacham might still hold that the whole city is like Isdal Ramas. Toshema, we learned in Abraisa, Shavas Pe'ir. A person is physically there, he's dwelling in a city. I feel like even if it's a large city like Antuchia, a very big city. Or Bemaira, he dwells in a cave. I feel he Kemaira Sitkiyo Melech Yehuda. Even if it's a huge cave, like the cave of Sitkiyo Melech Yehuda that she brings, and he ran away from the custom, was a massive, massive cave. Doesn't matter. Mahalach has Kula, the entire city or the entire cave is considered to be like his Dalar Amis, and then the Chutzalah Pai Mama. And out of it you can walk 2,000 Amis. Now the Gemara makes a diak over here. What kind of city are we talking about? We're talking about a city and a cave together. So the Gemara says, Katani ir dumya We're talking about a city that's similar to a cave. 
Just like a cave is a place that nobody lives there. So we'll assume that the city is also talking about a place that nobody lives there. Now, what did it say in the city? When does he consider the entire city to be his Dalaramis? Vishavas uh, in. Um, uh, only if he's physically present there do I say that the entire city is like his Dalaramis. If you put an aid of Tchum in there, then it's not going to be considered to be like his Dalaramis. So now, Mani, according to who does this go? If this goes according to Rabbi Kiva, my area chareva. Why would we say according to Rabbi Kiva that only because it's a desolate city, we don't consider it to be like his Daladamas? I feel like you shave on Nami, even if it's a settled city. Rabbi Kiva holds you place your Eid of in a city, you get only 2,000 Amas. It's, not, it's never considered to be like your uh, Daladamas. El olav Rabbonon. So we're going to have to say that this Braise goes according to the Rabbonon. And what does it say here in this Braise? The time the Shovas in. Only because he's physically present and it's a desolate city. Then I say that the whole city is like his Daladamas. Aval hiniachloi. But if it's a desolate city and you place your aid of there, then we don't consider it to be the city to the, like, like his Daladamas. So we have a Rai over here too. What Rav Yudam HaShmuel said. So the Gemara says, Loi, not necessarily. Taim, uh, sorry, Loi taim, uh, ir, dumye, Why are you saying the Pshat over here is that it's a desolate city? That's not the Pshat on this Braise. Don't say that it's a city that's similar to a Maira, that no one's living there. Elaim, say the opposite. Maira, dumye, the ir. We're talking about a cave that's similar to a city. Ma'ir, yesheva. Just like the city is a place that people live in it. At Maira, yesheva. We're talking about a cave that people live in it. And what's the Chiddush here? But Rabbi Kiva here, he, it's going according to Rabbi Kiva. The Omar, Rabbi Kiva said, From wherever you place your Eid of, you only have 2,000 Amis, even if it's in the middle of the city. And what he's coming to say is that if you're physically present there, then the entire city is considered to be like your Dalar Amis. That's what the Chiddush was. Rabbi Kiva only says, if you put your food there, if you made a Tchum in there, then you have only 2,000 hours. But if you're physically present there, then the entire city is like your Dalar Amas. but In the Braise it says, we're talking about a cave that was like the cave of Tzitkiyo. That cave of Tzitkiyo, he ran out of that cave. It was an escape route. No, 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 an escape route. No one was living there, Bechlau. So how can we say that we're talking about a cave that people are living in it? Answer the Gemara, Kemaira Sitkiyo, but Veloy Kemaira Sitkiyo. It's only an example, but it's not wasn't exactly like the Maira Sitkiyo. Kemaira Sitkiyo, Gedoyla, it's a very large cave, but Veloy Kemaira Sitkiyo, but it wasn't similar. The Ilo Hasam Chareva, Vahachi Yesheva. Sitkiyo was a cave that nobody lived in it. Here we're talking about a cave that people are living inside the cave. Gemara concludes, Mar Yehuda, Ashkechino, Lebnei, Mevrachto, Mar Yehuda found the people of Mevrachta, the Kamoisvi Eiduvayu, Bevei Knishta, the Bey Agubar. They placed their Eidav inside of a shul of the city of Bey Agubar. And the city was, the, the shul was outside the city. If the, if the uh, shul was inside the city, you don't gain anything by putting an Eidav there, as we learned before. They placed the Eidav in the city, in the shul that is, outside the city. Okay, Omar he said to them, Gavu Beit Fei, put it deeper into the shul, further away from the city, so you should be able to go further. Okay, so the further in, so you have this uh, shul, and it's outside the city. If you're going to put it by the entrance of the shul that's closer to the city, so what he was telling them is, so that's where your Eidav is, and that's where you have to start measuring your Tchum. But if you're going to put it further into the shul, but the other end of the shul, further away from the city, you're going to get more space for your Eidav Tchumen. Okay, now about this, the point is, this is all based on Rabbi Kiva's opinion. What's Rabbi Kiva's opinion? Wherever you put your Eidov, that's where you have 2,000 Amas from. Not anymore. According to the Tanakhama, just like in a city, where you put the Eidov in a city and the entire city is considered to be like your Dalar Amas, if you put your Eidov inside a shul, the entire shul is considered to be like your Dalar Amas. So it doesn't make a difference where in the shul you put, it, you put the Eidov. You start measuring your Eidov from the other side of the shul. Amalei Rave, so therefore Rave said to, uh, who was it over again? My Yehuda, Palga, you're making an argument about this. Why are you arguing the Chachamim? Be'edevin, less the Chashla de Rave Kiva. Regarding Eidev Tchumim, which is only Midrabanan, and we're Mekel, we're always Mekel, nobody is going to listen to the opinion of Rave Kiva that was Mach. Once you put your Eidev into a shul, so the other side of the shul is where you start counting from. The whole shul is considered to be like your Dalar so it doesn't make a difference in what location of the shul they place the Eidev Tchumim in. Hadron Aloch Ketzad Ma'avren.